Okay, so uh, this morning I'd like to discuss cholesterol and heart disease with you. And the reason that I want to discuss it with you, actually there are three reasons. The first is that heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States. More than one out of four people in the United States will die of heart disease. Okay? That means if we have a class of 12 people and you are all Americans, three of you would die of heart attacks. <laughs> all right? Uh, also, cholesterol is, uh, is uh, very much in the public's attention. You, can, you see the word everywhere in the grocery store, on, in magazines, lower your cholesterol, no cholesterol. I would challenge you to, to do that next time you go shopping. Look and see how many times you see cholesterol, cholesterol. Also, I've had six years doing research at Cornell University, uh, conducting research on the basic metabolism of cholesterol. Right? So I want to share some of that with you. Now, uh, the way I'm going to present this is with a series of questions and answers. Excuse me, you say you have three reasons. Yes, I have three reasons. Number one is uh, the first cause for day. Yep. Number two is uh, it receives, public attention. It receives a lot of public attention. And the third is so I've worked on it for six years. Six years. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. um, now, when you do your presentations, you don't have to do a series of questions and answers. This is just one way to do it. All right? Uh, this works with this, but you don't have to do it in this exact style. Right. Back to the presentation. Now, um, first I'll describe what happens in a heart attack. Then I'll, I'll describe cholesterol and uh, its nature. Then I'll talk about HDL and LDL. I wonder if you've ever heard of that. No. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. HDL yes. is... Uh, is the not, uh, not beneficial? No, it's the other way around. Yeah. HDL is the good guy. Oh. All right, LDL is the bad guy. Now, some of you are saying, this is alphabet soup. What is it? I don't know. All right, I'll, I'm going to explain those things to you. And then I'll give some uh, recommendations that your doctor would give to you uh, related to cholesterol. Okay? All right. So, um, what happens in a heart attack? I mean, we've heard the word heart attack. But what exactly is going on? Well, by the way, I should erase this. What exactly is going on with a heart attack? Well, there are two factors that are necessary for a heart attack. The first one is and I'm going to show it on this slide. Gradually, over time, a substance called plaque builds up on the inside of the arteries. Does everybody understand arteries? No. no. Okay. Um, if I said blood vessel, would you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Now, blood vessels are the tubes mm -hmm. that your blood runs through in your body. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there are two basic kinds. Actually, there are three, but there are two basic kinds of uh, blood vessels. One is the arteries that take the blood mm -hmm. away from the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then there are the veins that bring the, the blood back to the heart. So you got arteries and you have veins. Okay? Now, this, this plaque tends to build up on the walls of your arteries. Right? So what happens is, if you look at this slide, you can see over time, the amount of space that the blood can go through decreases over time. You understand? Mm -hmm. Right? Now, 
you know, when, when you're young, maybe you've, you've got nice, clean arteries and the blood goes through easily. And then over time, plaque builds up, plaque builds up, and it gets narrower and narrower. And what happens to blood pressure when that happens? Gets higher. Yeah, the blood pressure gets higher and higher. Okay? Now, there's one other thing that you need for the heart attack. And that is a clot. Have you heard this word clot? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? I see. Yes, yes, you were saying in... Uh, okay. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the liquid turning... Becomes solid, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you, you know, bruise yourself, uh, inside, the, the, the blood clumps, becomes a little hard. Or when you cut yourself, right, the blood begins to come out, it but, it, but it stops because of clotting, all right? So, so think of a clot as a, as a hard little ball, okay? Now, you've got a narrow artery, and you've got a little ball that comes, and what happens? Plug. It plugs. Plug or oh, clog? Clog, either one. Okay. Okay? It clogs the artery. It plugs it. Okay? Now, those are the two things that, that uh, lead to the heart attack. You've got the narrowing arteries because of plaque, and you have the clots that plug the narrow holes. All right? And that cuts off blood flow to the heart, and then the heart tissue dies. All right? Now, I'm just going to back up here so uh, you can see. So the blood clot gets caught in the narrowed heart artery. Now, I told you that arteries lead away from the heart, right? Mm -hmm. But with a heart attack, we're talking about special arteries that go from the heart to the heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's in the heart. Well, it is, it's not, no, it, it goes out of the heart and then it comes, back. comes to, it, it actually feeds the heart itself. Mm. Mm. Right, the, the heart is a pump, it pumps blood everywhere, but some of the blood goes to the heart to feed itself. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the coronary arteries. So those are the, the arteries that feed the heart itself, the muscle of the heart. All right? These coronary arteries get plugged, the blood can't reach parts of the heart, the heart tissue dies, it's a heart attack. Okay? Yeah, I'll show you. Right? If you look in this diagram, we see two main coronary arteries. Uh -huh. Alright? They go from the heart, out of the heart, to the heart tissue itself. Uh -huh. Alright? If you get a clot in any of those, any of the heart muscle below the clot won't receive any blood. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And if it doesn't receive any blood, it'll die. It'll stop working. You'll have a heart attack. Okay? Okay. Now, how's cholesterol involved? <laughs> What's cholesterol got to do with it? Well, it turns out that cholesterol is a primary component of plaque. What does that mean? What that means is the plaque that builds up in the arteries is mostly cholesterol. Right? So if you've got a lot of cholesterol, you're likely to have a lot of plaque. If you don't have much cholesterol, you'll probably have less plaque. Is that clear? All right. But the question is, is cholesterol all bad? And the answer to that is no. Your body needs cholesterol. In fact, your liver makes cholesterol. Right? Cholesterol is essential for healthy life, especially 
the nerves. And I want to show you what I mean by that. Everyone, have you ever seen a picture like this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. What is this? Nerve. It's a nerve cell. All right. Now, um, it, it, with nerve cells, the message travels from the big body down the arm. Okay. And then it connects to another nerve cell after that. All right. Now, what happens is you see that yellow stuff. Yes. Yeah. That is called the myelin sheath. Uh, by the way, have you noticed all my pictures have the source on the slide? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, you want to do that. Right? Now, what this myelin sheath is like is the rubber around a cord. Right? Imagine what would happen if this cord had no rubber around it. What would happen to the electricity? Yeah, it, it would go every direction. It wouldn't go from the source to the machine that you wanted to run. It would, it would just go everywhere. It would shock you. It would, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. All right. So this this uh, rubber makes the flow of electricity faster and more efficient. Yeah, in the same way, the myelin sheath, which is made of cholesterol mostly, the myelin sheath enables your nerve impulses to go quickly and in the right direction. The cholesterol? Uh, helps to make it yes myelin so myelin yes myelin? The, the, the myelin yeah cholesterol is a primary component of myelin okay. okay so we absolutely need it we cannot live without cholesterol all right so go ahead in the last uh, in the last uh, slide you say that uh, the cholesterol is necessary for the nerves? Yes, especially, yeah. These are the nerve cells that I just showed you with the myelin sheet. It's just uh, important for the nerves? No, actually, that's a good question. Um, every cell, every cell in the body has a cell membrane. Mm -hmm. All right? Cholesterol also plays a role in cell membranes. Okay, so your cell membranes wouldn't be uh, perfectly function functional without cholesterol. All right. Okay, so anyway, we understand that cholesterol is a bad guy, but it's also necessary, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of research has been conducted to, to try to find out what exactly goes on with cholesterol. How is cholesterol processed in the body? All right? And that's what I was involved in for six years. And what uh, has been discovered is that uh, cholesterol is carried in the body in several different ways, in several di different packages. All right? Two of the primary packages that carry cholesterol are HDL and LDL. Okay? Um, and I will explain what HDL and LDL are, are a little more detailed. Um, but first I want to give you some background. Cholesterol is oily. Fat is oily, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what happens, uh, and you know that our body is mostly water, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Now, what happens if you mix oil and water? Two layers. Yeah, yeah, it, it separates, right? It forms two layers, right? Now, our body has water and also has fat. Why is it that we don't have all the oil up here and all the water down here? Yeah. 
Have you ever thought about that? No. no. <laughs> yeah, there's some magic that goes on. <laughs> it's, it's scientific magic, it's not real magic, but uh, it's almost magical what happens. Uh, and, and this is what, what goes on. In order to get the, the oils, the lipids, lipids are, are oily things, in order to get the lipids to go through the blood and to the body and, and not just rise to the top, it has to be packaged. It has to be packaged. And these packages are called lipoproteins. The proteins are like the box, the package. All right? And the lipids are inside the box. All right? Now, proteins are very, very big molecules. Very, very big. They're, they're very, very big molecules. And it turns out that uh, proteins can have some parts that are kind of oily. Right, some parts of protein like oils. Other parts of proteins like water. All right? Can you see where this is going? You've got a protein package. The inside of the package likes oil. And so the oil can be inside the package. The outside of the protein likes water. And so it can travel through the blood without separating. All right? I, I just want to give you a, a couple words here. This part that likes oil is called hydrophobic. Okay, hydro means water, phobe means hate. It hates water, it likes oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you guess what the outside is called? Hydro. Hydro, hydro what? Black oil. <laughs> <laughs> Hydrophilic. Phil. Phil means love. Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Okay. So because the lipoproteins have hydrophilic portions on the outside, it can travel through the blood without separating. Because it has hydrophobic portions on the inside, it can hold the oil. Thus, we don't get all the oil in our head and all the water in our, in our feet. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, that's the magic of the lipoproteins. Now, what exactly are HDL and the LDL? HDL means high density lipoprotein. Do you understand density? Yeah. Okay. Density of the of the like people in the country. Okay. Population density is how many people live in a certain area. Yeah. Okay. Density by itself is the, is the weight divided by the volume. Okay. Okay. So if something is high density, it means it's relatively heavy. You're cloudy. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to think about this. Which, which is more dense, protein or oil? Oil. If you took, for example, a piece of meat, which is mostly protein, mm -hmm. and you put it in water, would it float or would it sink? Sink. sink. Okay, so, so meat protein is pretty Heavy. dense. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Now, if you took a glob of fat off of the meat and you put it in the water, would it sink or would it float? Float. float. It'll float. Okay, so protein is more dense than lipid. 
okay? Now, the high density lipoproteins have a lot of protein. Think of it as a very thick package. It has a lot of protein and a little bit of oil. That's the high density lipoprotein. Is that okay? The low density lipoprotein, it's lighter, right? It has more oil and less protein. Okay, this is the protein and this is the oil. You see what's going on? All right. Um, the high density protein, lipoprotein has a high percentage of protein and a low percentage of oil. Tell me about the LDL. So, L, LD? No. LD. Tell me about the LDL. Low density mm -hmm. protein. It, it has a lot of oil, 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 oil and a little yes. protein. Okay. That's why they, they have different densities. Okay? Now, it turns out, if you ask, well, how do LDL and HDL work? It turns out that HDL is the good guy. It's the good lipoprotein. You can think of HDLs as garbage trucks that travel through your body collecting all the garbage. And then they take that garbage to the liver and the liver breaks it down, gets rid of it, destroys it. Okay? Imagine a city without garbage trucks. No. Yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> right? The garbage just piles up and piles up and piles up and piles up and pretty soon the city is not healthy. Okay? So think of the HDLs as garbage trucks. By the way, I have this word catabolized, right? It means, it means break down, destroy. Okay? Oh, so again, uh, but you said HDL is more uh, density than uh, LDL. HDL is higher density, it's heavier. It means uh, it makes you fat? No, no. It means. Uh, it, I mean, th this is the way it's made. There's a lot of protein and a little oil, and it acts like a garbage truck. It removes, it basically it collects all the, the extra excess cholesterol in your body. Takes it to the liver, and the liver destroys it, catabolizes it. Okay? So LDL seems to prevent the accumulation of plaque in the arteries. And you can imagine, because it's the garbage truck, and it collects all the excess stuff, removes it from the arteries, takes it to the liver, the liver breaks it down, and it's gone. All right? Now, LDL, on the other hand, is the bad guy. It carries cholesterol to the body tissue. And you, you can imagine that uh, you know it's a relatively thin package, right? And the the cholesterol kind of leaks out everywhere as it's going. Okay, and some of it gets stuck on your artery walls and things like that. You think of it like that. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. But you said cholesterol uh, is good, right? Cholesterol is necessary. It's necessary. It's but, necessary. But if it is too much, it's not right. Right. And what happens is if you have a, a, a lot of these, and when you eat, when you eat a, a high fat meal, you produce a lot of these. All right. When you exercise, your body produces a lot of these. Right. I produce, my body produce uh, HDL? Uh-huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And, and our body doesn't... Your body produces both of them. Oh. Right? But oh. you can influence the percentage of, of them depending on the kind of food that you eat and the kind of 
lifestyle you have. All right. Then the the LDL uh, doesn't come from uh, out outer like substance. Form. Well, when you eat, w when you eat, you digest the fat, and your body absorbs the fat. But then that fat has to be <coughs> packaged. And usually, after a meal, it will be packaged in the LDL. So and, and, then, and then it has to be transferred and processed. And how does it become HDL? Okay. Uh -huh. it's, it's a long and complicated process, and I don't know that you want to know the answer to that. <laughs> 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 but, but what happens is, through many steps, and uh, there are things called transfer proteins that transfer it from one to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the lab that I worked in discovered one of those transfer proteins. All right? But if you understand that uh, LDL contributes to plaque, HDL cleans up the plaque. That's important. Okay. So, how do we know how much cholesterol we have and whether it's the right level or not? All right. What levels are healthy and unhealthy? I'm going to erase this. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Well, if you go to the doctor and they, they take your blood and they measure the amount of total cholesterol, that's all the, the cholesterol in the blood, uh, if you have less than 200 milligrams per 100 mils of blood, well, 100 mils of blood is, is yeah. 100 mils of blood is about that much. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> if you have 200, less than 200 milligrams in that much blood, that seems to be healthy. Okay, less than 200. On the other hand, if you have more than 240, that greatly increases the risk of heart disease. Okay? And if you're somewhere in between 200 and 240, your doctor would say, keep an eye on this. You need to be a little careful. We don't want to get them up any higher. Okay? If you're under 200, your doctor will say, you're good. All right? That's total cholesterol. Now, they also can divide it up. They can, they can find how much HDL you have and how much LDL cholesterol you have. Right? And it seems that this ratio is really important. It's not just the total, it's the ratio. Um, if you have a ratio of 3.2 LDL to HDL, okay? Now imagine what that would be if we have, let's say, a, a 150 LDL and 50 HDL. What's the ratio? Three. Three. Okay? Now 3.2 for women, 3.6 for men seems to have average risk of heart disease. All right? Now, if, if it's just three, is that going to be healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy. Healthy. It's going to be healthy because there's relatively less of this and relatively more of that. Okay? The bigger this gets, the worse it is. All right? Now, if this ratio gets up to five for women, let's say it's 180 to 30. This is, what's this ratio? <laughs> Six. Six. All right. You see the red here? Okay. Watch out. <laughs> this doubles the risk. Now, do you remember I said that about 25% of Americans will die of heart, heart attack? Yeah. Yes. Just living in America, your risk is one in four. If you double that risk, you're talking about a 50% chance. One and two. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. 
Now, on the other hand, ratios of 1 to 1.5, let's say it was 125 to 100. You have a, this is LDL and this is HDL. What's this ratio going to be? 1.25, right? Right? This is associated with half of the normal risk. Okay, so what that means is instead of a 1 in 4 chance, it's a 1 in 8 chance that you'll die of a heart attack. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, when you say it's less than the 1.5, it's going to be dangerous. That's gonna, no, that's going to be healthy, healthy, healthy. It has less risk of heart. Okay. Okay. Okay? Now, look at the total here. What's the total? 225, right? 125 plus 100. Now, when you look at the total cholesterol, you think, hmm, this is dangerous, right? This, is, this could be dangerous. This is between 200 and 240, right? Mm -hmm. Shall you, right? Yes. OK. But when you look at the ratio, you say, wow, this is pretty good. So that's good. Right. So what would your doctor tell you? Uh. Well, he'd say, your total seems a little high, but the ratio seems to be very good. So you're probably OK, but keep an eye on it. <laughs> so what does that mean? OK. What it means is you're probably OK, but you know, go to the doctor every six months or something like that and make sure it's not getting higher. Then the LDL can increase uh, by by the LDL. Like if the uh, if the LDL is increase is increasing, then the LDL will increase too. Nope, nope. Uh, the total will increase, but not the LDL. So the LDL can be higher than the LDL. It can. Yes, it can. All right, but that's not usually the case. All right. Now. If your cholesterol level is high, or if you don't want to have a high level of cholesterol, what can you do? What's recommended? All right. Well, a low-fat diet. And maybe you understand why. What happens when you eat fat? Then LDL is going to increase. What kind? LDL is going to going to increase. It's going to rise. Okay. Um, now they especially recommend low animal fat. Now I haven't told you why on this yet. How many kind of fats? Well, generally we we break it down into plant fat and animal fat. To, okay. get the, to get the protein, because uh, oh. I, I don't understand your question. Like, no, that's the question. Like, if you if you didn't eat, eat uh, low animal fat, then you the, your body will not have protein. Okay, hold on there. Do uh, you understand the question? It says if you don't eat animal products, you won't get protein. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, doctors recommend minimizing animal fat because. <laughs> Cholesterol only exists in animal tissues. It does not exist in plants. Okay? Now, imagine you have a box of rice that says, no cholesterol. <laughs> what should your response be? Of course, of course not. <laughs> it's a plant. <laughs> All right? But you'll see, if you go in the, in the supermarket, you'll see these, these you know, cereals and say, no cholesterol. Of course, they're made of corn. <laughs> <laughs> but what they're trying to do is get the attention of, of shoppers who don't know this. And they, oh, I'll buy this, I'll buy this. This one has no cholesterol. Well, none of them do. <laughs> All right? Yeah. All right? So cholesterol 
itself is only found in animal tissue. So if you eat animal products, you will get more cholesterol in your diet. Okay? Now, the question is, well, can you just not eat animal products? Well, it is possible because beans uh, have, have plenty of protein and, and if you get to your, your grains in the right order, uh, they, they do have proteins and they can balance each other to, to be okay. But nobody is saying, don't eat any animal products. The doctors say, be wise about it, don't eat too much. All right? Generally speaking, if you have two portions like this of meat a day, that's enough. Or if you have a few cups of milk, that's almost enough. All right? And if you drink milk, drink skim milk. Because skim milk has all the protein without the fat. Is that okay? All right. What else do they recommend? Okay. They say no trans fat. Now, I haven't mentioned trans fat in this lecture, but trans fat is an artificial fat. It's a man-made fat uh, that food processors use to keep food lasting long on the shelf. Right? Have you ever smelled oil that's been very old and it smells really bad? Okay. Natural oils do that, but these artificial oils with trans fats don't do that and that's why food processes use them. However, they are very unhealthy. They can raise your uh, LDL cholesterol dramatically. In addition to avoiding trans fat and animal fat, uh, doctors will recommend that you use vegetable oils. Uh, animal fats always have some cholesterol. All animal products will have some cholesterol. Plant products do not. Plant oils have no cholesterol. If you walk through the aisles of the supermarket, you'll see that uh, many packages say, no cholesterol, no cholesterol. Maybe you'll, you'll go to breakfast cereals, cereals made of corn and oats, and they'll say, no cholesterol. What should you say to that? Of course not. They come from plants. But the food manufacturers like to put those on the labels to attract uh, customers who may not really know much about nutrition. So uh, vegetable oils are recommended uh, rather than uh, animal fats, okay? One other thing that doctors recommend is eating fish or flaxseed because these have a special kind of fatty acid called omega-3 um, sorry, omega-3 fatty acids. Now, I told you earlier in this lecture that two things are needed for a heart attack. First, you have to have narrowed arteries because of plaque building up. And then you have to have the clot that plugs the hole. Okay? These omega-3 Fatty acids prevent the clots. They thin your blood so the blood can go through easier. All right? And then finally, exercise. Exercise has been shown time and time again uh, to increase the HDL cholesterol. That is, the good guys, the garbage trucks that are cleaning up uh, sticky, ugly cholesterol from all over your system. So, to summarize what I've told you, uh, I've described atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is the narrowing of the arteries because of plaque. Right? And I've shown you how cholesterol is involved, that cholesterol is a primary component of this plaque that narrows the arteries. I've also shown you who the good guys and the bad guys are. The good guys are HDL because they're the garbage trucks that clean up your system. And the bad guys are LDL because they take the, uh, the fat and cholesterol uh, that you've digested and they transport it and it gets all gunky in your arteries. I've also shown you levels to strive for.
finally, I, I showed you several recommendations for health. Now, you are all young. If you apply these recommendations and you live by these recommendations from now, you probably will not have to worry at all about cholesterol problems and heart disease when you're my age. Okay? So I hope that when you leave this classroom, you remember that Ken cares about me. And that's why he told me this. All right? Now, one other thing I want to show you. Uh, these are my references. And I just want to point out uh, the APA format here. Notice the alphabetical order. Centers comes before a coronary. Right? And if I go to the next page, E before M, okay, it's alphabetical order. All right? Also, you'll notice the hang indent. Okay? Also, you'll notice that uh, an author or a group that acts as an author, Centers for Disease Control Intervention, comes first, and then the date, and then the title is italicized, and then the, the retrieval information. Okay? These are sorts. Uh, this is the sort of uh, format that I want you to use in your presentations. Okay, any questions?